The stuff All right. What's yes. what else we got? Um. Well, now it's time for the apocalyptic post. First of all, uh, before we get going about this, have have you seen? I think it's just gone viral in about the last twenty four hours or so. Uh, no, a, a a brother and a sister fooled their sister who was high at the time into thinking that the zombie apocalypse had actually happened. <laughs> no, I haven't seen that. <laughs> um, her her response is like, "Does that mean we can't go to Costco?" <laughs> so yeah, it's. It's, it's pretty amusing. That yeah, was, hey, yeah, that was your thought? yeah, like you know, you're, she was high. I, mm-hmm. I don't think she was really uh, understanding the immediate threat at, at, at first. Of course, it takes a little while for it to set in. I when, mean, not we can't know. go to Starbucks we, or we can't go to McDonald's, Costco. Well, <laughs> well, that, it's funny that you say it, but it's Costco, Jeffrey. This is something else that's that's gone viral here in the last. I guess a week or so is some girl wrote and uh, you know, one of her admission essays for several Ivy league schools and Stanford. Uh, and she received admission from all of them because, and what she wrote about was having gone to Costco throughout her life. I mean, I actually read the essay. It was very compelling. Okay. That seems uh, so. Weird. Costco, Costco means something to people, Jeff and God damn it. If there's an apocalypse, that's a big deal. Well, it is a damn progressive organization, which is good. Well, that's that's true. That's true. <clears throat> anyway. The Walking Dead All right. Season uh, 6 wrap-up. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Jeff, okay. You, you were quite fired up after that. <sighs> I'm still fired up. I'm still reading about other people fired up, but I'll have you know that I was fired up before I read about anybody else being fired up. For all the shits that I gave, I could have been the only one who was pissed off about this last, this past season of Walking Dead. You wrote and, quite um, a long article about your well, your, your foment, your fury. Um, well, Jeffrey, uh, I don't think it was that long. I mean... I, 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 how many words was that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's it, like it, was, it was. It's maybe like a chapter in a book or something. Whatever. Lo- longer than um, goddamn it. Mm. Uh, well, okay. Well, it's funny because uh, my sister had sent me something yesterday. Uh, uh, a professor at Tufts University. I don't know if you're familiar with Tufts. Uh, I'm actually very familiar with Tufts because of, of what I do. Uh, it's a very scholarly place and full yeah. of scholarly people. And a professor of international politics at Tufts uh, actually wrote an op-ed for Washington Post uh, railing against this last episode of season six. And it was, just, it was basically titled the same thing that my, my piece was, is why I'm, why I'm quitting Walking Dead. Uh, so you, it's you, interesting to see. You're quitting Walking Dead? Well, we'll, we'll talk about that, Jeff. I don't think we'll, you can let's, resist. It's got you know zombies. What? We're, we're, we're going we're gonna to talk about it. Okay, we're going to talk okay. about it. <laughs> um, anyway, it was just interesting to see that it's having the same effect for people that it did for me. And I think a lot of people were pissed off about the cliffhanger nature of the episode. But as you, you know, as we go along through our little, our wrap up here, um, I don't think people are actually pissed off about the cliffhanger. I think they just don't know what to be pissed off about. They haven't quite put their finger on it yet. Well, um, I have a few things I can talk about. <laughs> as, Say we what? Go, as we go through the list, I have a few things I can complain about. Oh, oh I mean, because that's because you're an intelligent human being. And well, well, thank not, you. So I'm not going to send sell the general populace short. Although there are probably a few too many who, vo- who would vote for Trump, um, <laughs> whom I would not trust their judgment regarding walking. Like dead. I said, we don't really, anyway. we don't need to worry about the zombie apocalypse. We need to worry about the redneck apocalypse. The redneck apocalypse. Well, you know what? <laughs> there we go. All right, Jeff. So let's okay. Uh, let, let's let's back it up a little bit since we're sort of. 
reviewing or chatting about the entirety of season six. And I heard some complaints early on about uh, the serialized nature of the first several episodes. Because, you know, you had the one thing happen, and then the next episode, it basically took off exactly where the last left off. Yeah, but there are uh, shows that do from that. Certain, yeah, from certain characters' point of view. And then you'd pick up the next episode where the other, you know, where you left off before that. And then by the time you get to, what, episode, you know, the, the uh, mid-season finale, a.k.a. the quote-unquote death of Glenn, uh, <laughs> you're still in that same serialized sequence Depicting the events following the uh, zombies getting free from the rock quarry. Yeah. Uh, so I, I will say this: I was not one of those people who had a problem with that. I no, actually, I. I don't, I don't get why people I liked have it. I mean, you're telling a story about the apocalypse, okay? Uh, I mean, stories are going to get very boring if you just tell stories about them hunkering down and waiting for the next shitty thing to happen. Not every uh, story whereas, arc, not every story arc is a one and done. Right, right, right. And so like where the, you know, you had the uh, picking up late, you know, the later on, I, don't figure, I can't tell you exactly which episode was that. It was not the, after the mid season return though, um, where you definitely told it was after the, uh, you know, the Rick, Rick Sean episode where they finally hook up. Uh, which I'm, I'm guessing was like what episode ten or eleven somewhere around there. Mm. Uh, that that's where you actually had some passage of time and like, okay, you, you're not going to tell a story about these people through every minute of every day. You're going to say, okay, this happened. Here's the story of how this happened. You know, moving right along. Okay, and then they're starting something else. The next little episodic uh, sequence of events, which is what we got this you know, most of this last half, and you know, the go from there. So like. When we started season six, I'm just trying to say I didn't like it, or I did like it rather. And then we had the uh, the death of the quote unquote death of Glenn. How did you feel about that? Um, I, I know we talked about it in previous episodes of Kinky Tauntaun. I like his, you know, his keep going, never say die, never say never say surrender. You know, almost cockroach esque attitude towards life. So. <laughs> Oh, oh no! Really? <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad he's still alive. I'm not glad he's just a cockroach, but, but, a, but right. a friendly one, like in Wally. Yes, right, right. <clears throat> but I, so I'm glad he's still alive. Okay. <laughs> um. So you didn't like feel ripped off by that at all? Like how? And and I'm. I I I didn't mind it, but I will tell you this: I've never seen a dumpster that high off the ground before in my life. <laughs> Well, he's a bit skinnier than us. Uh, he okay, he is, but <laughs> I've still never. But did you see the the amount of space? There's like a foot clearance underneath there. We we could have gotten under there quite easily. We we probably could have even spooned. <laughs> um, well, like I said, I, I like my Scooby Doo thing of flipping it over and like moving it an inch at a time. <laughs> I, I do recollect uh, having a conversation about how how he gets out of that. And of course, when the when the uh, season came back after the finale, you don't have that so much as they they just get disinterested and leave. They forget about Glenn because he's covered in you know zombie guts or whatever, and so they don't they don't go after him. They just end up leaving, and he just goes with Enid or whatever. Um, yeah, um, yeah. That's 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 where we really have to pick up this conversation because. It's after that moment, and we're still talking. We're going all the way up from the time the quarry blockade broke up until the time where the Alexandrians make their stand or whatever. Uh, that's all one uh, vignette in time. We're talking probably about a period of maybe how many? You think that's probably like a, a day, twenty four hours? Um, maybe, but uh. One of the main things I have to complain about that time period is I right, they knew that the, the the that there had been some damage around that area where that you know, it was a church was. Yeah. They didn't check the building. No, no. In, in all that time nobody God. saw that big ass gash in the building tower. Nobody Right. Well, I think that was all precipitated by well, the uh the the truck. Yes. That spent you know, Spencer ends up killing the guy with the the semi yeah. who goes barreling in there. I think it was actually brought down from that mm -hmm. with the wolves. 
Uh, so I, I don't necessarily see that as an issue, but man. I do. You have to be aware of such things. And not, not to mention. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. And like, why would you not have actually just. It just seems odd. It seems it seems odd. Besides, you it don't want odd. you don't want a tall structure right next to your wall. Right. I was actually yeah, that's kind that of what I, what I was going to say. Well, torn it down or just enclosed around it because you could use the tower yeah. to see around. Yeah, yeah. And it didn't it didn't seem like Alexandria had any other height. Yeah. Around because you know that was the, one of the things later on with the hilltop episode. It's like oh, you get up to the top floors and you can see around for miles. I'm like, well. If the dumbasses had built that church inside the walls, they would have been able to do the same thing. And just like in Game of Thrones, you got to go out and clear the forest so you can see the wildlings coming. Oh, see, you just said Game of Thrones, and that makes me moist. <laughs> I mean, we're 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 almost there, Jeff. We're almost. almost there. What, to what the, day uh, is it? What day is it? It's the twenty fourth. Uh, is the premiere, and we are twelve days Ooh. and what about nine hours away. <laughs> Yeah, All right. I'm, I'm counting down by the minute, my friend. All right, but we have to yeah. draw ourselves back to the. Oh walking yeah, okay. Dead. Wa- walking Dead, right, right, right. So, um, hold on. I see the. Hold on a second. Okay. Can you pause for a moment? Yeah, yeah. And now a word from our sponsors. Some parents, it's just too late. Planned Parenthood. All right, Jeffrey. So, uh, in talking about this Walking Dead thing, um, uh, we we are fairly certain now in this show where I think our people are not abiding by. The uh, the tropes like we were we were just saying are I'm saying it's not abiding by the tropes they are abiding by the tropes uh, people are behaving as stupidly as they might in a horror movie from time to time and man for a show like The Walking Dead that had proven time and time again that they weren't going to do that to suddenly start doing that because they're like easy story decisions uh, it, it it kills the show for me man um, it's disappointing yes. Uh, it's 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 just stupid people doing stupid things, and I'm gonna tell you that like it's just so counterintuitive because um, you know d- dealing with what I have to deal with on a, on a day to day basis and no, knowing things I know from my job, yeah, um, you, see you know Darwin, I, I have a very you see Darwin's theories in action every day. I do, I do, and uh, you know, of course, that means I have more than than just a functional knowledge of psychology as well, <laughs> and in noticing that, I also had to notice that uh, these characters are not exhibiting patterns of true human thinking. Uh, what? Uh, let me be more specific with that. We have convergent thinking. Whereas, hey, if it ain't bri- if it ain't broken, don't fix it. Um, which, of course, you want to have, you know, a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. Like you don't want to just start watering your plants with with Gatorade because plants need electrolytes, <laughs> right? Um, you know, you you need to keep doing those things because those are the things that work. We're mm-hmm. not trying to reinvent the wheel, although you know. New problems arise uh, every single day in our own personal lives uh, and in the lives of our species, uh, and we are facing some of those issues right now and trying to think our ways out of them. Things like climate change or whatever. What the only talking. ways that we are going to actually be able to fix the problem is by thinking divergently. So, like, I'm, I'm going to throw this out there and see what you think. Okay, picture this. Okay. Da, da. Okay. 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 
<laughs> Sorry, you, you did such excellent timpani there. I, I was very proud. I played it when um, we played it in high school. I played the timpani. Uh, I, I recall. I recall. <laughs> On that song. Um, that, that was our jam, man. <laughs> uh, anyway, what, what, what I'm trying to say is, I uh, think back to 2001 Space Odyssey and how that movie began with the uh, the twilight of the hominid shouldn't say twilight i should say the dawn of the hominid species and how the uh how it is is portrayed in the movie okay i realize it's fiction however it's really i mean it's an excellent metaphor for what really went on over the millennia and eons and that's you know in our development as a species we have the one ape uh, with his group just trying to drink water and the, they're just sitting there chilling with some tapirs, which we're not supposed to recognize as tapirs because they're prehistoric animals, but whatever. They look old. <laughs> um, and then like all of a sudden, like this bad, bad ape posse rolls up and tries to chase him away. And then, you know, all the other apes are, ch- are chased out. We, and there's this one ape who we're sort of looking at as a main character. And the monolith appears suddenly out of nowhere one morning, and that's when we're led to believe, and I've actually read the novel too, um, the monolith is responsible for flipping the switch. And that ape grabs one of the bones of the taper creatures and just starts like beating the hell out of anything and anyone, uh, be, you know, hunting animals. And then when the bad apes come back, they beat the shit out of the, (laughs) they beat the shit out of those apes. Um, I mean, we're, I mean, this may be the hominid version of Rick Grimes for all I know. Um, <laughs> wait, no, it's not because Rick Grimes is not currently exhibiting uh, divergent thinking. Would it be the and hominid that's, that's version the of Negan? Uh, so yeah, there's no divergent thinking being exhibited by the character. No, nobody's thinking outside of the box. And my contention is, while that might happen from time to time, hence Darwin's survival of the fittest, the fact that these characters have survived for so long while not thinking divergent, I guess they have thought divergently for a while. Yeah. I mean, they really truly have. Like when they, when they got to the prison to actually like. Hey, you know what? This is where we used to keep people in. Maybe we can keep ourselves in there and everybody and everything else out. I mean, that that's part of it. And I think we were saying before is uh, like that's kind of where we see yeah. parts of this story kind of come off the rails uh, in terms of the the show and the dumbness. <sighs> thought I thought the dumbness really really started taking hold again after the prison. Yeah. So okay. So let's talk about and and I, I've read the source material. And I I read it currently all the way up to I think the most current issue is like I think one fifty six one fifty seven actually may have came out come out last week but uh, I've read all the way through one fifty six of the Walking Dead comic book series mm. uh, because you know I, I was a fairly devoted fan and it it took me a while to really just start I mean the comic book's a comic book I guess I don't really care how things are necessarily portrayed in that as much are they dumb in the comics because. Too? Well, there are enough characters in the comics where you think that there are, you know, intelligent people on the periphery that you can account for. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the show, we have no, we have no, I mean, in the comic books, it's never explicit. I just had hopes. And of course, in the show now, we are definitely getting to the point. And I guess that's where I'm I'm about ready to steer the conversation is we think back to the, you know, the prison where the thing started to go wrong uh, with Andrea. Okay. She was actually the first, the first. Uh, original, I shouldn't say she was, she wasn't necessarily the first original, but she was one of the first originals to meet her end. And, um, you know, whether you reason people realize it or not, Andrea was a trained, she was a lawyer. So she's a seemingly intelligent person. Yeah. Uh, and if you read the comic, I don't know if the show has said this as well as it said in the comics, but, uh, Michonne, I think actually is a lawyer or was a lawyer rather. Hmm. Um, so, but you never get the sense. You never get the sense that Michonne is an intelligent human being in the show. Not. I mean, well. she's awesome. She's she's one of my favorite characters. But the fact that she's so eager to follow stupidity sort of undermines any sort of a, a intelligence that she might have. Well, she was. Uh, she, be she was that. the first one to figure out. You know, if she had some. Some pet zombies. The rest of them would leave it the fuck alone. Yeah. Okay. Then, and that's and that's season three. 
and that's season three where things are still going really, really well uh, in terms of the storytelling. But, you know, okay, so after Andrea, we have Herschel. Who's a veterinarian? So obviously he, he's you know advanced education. And, and in post and from there, post apocalypse, you're a veterinarian. You're chief surgeon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and so from there, you know they had the whole terminus thing, and then, then they're on the road for a while. Uh, and you, you, they finally get to Alexandria where they meet Diana. I'm sorry, Diana. Deanna, who, in my opinion, she seemed. Like she, she, she talked the talk, I guess. She actually seemed like a fairly intelligent person, if not the most intelligent person they had come across. Smart. She was very wise. Smart, but sheltered. Uh, she had, yeah, yeah, obviously a little bit naive, yes. but that's, that's, honestly, that's one of the things I have a problem with because as wise as they portrayed Deanna, I, I, you know, unless there were truly something mentally wrong with her, which there definitely wasn't. Uh, she would have right, she would question what was going on outside the walls. Uh, and probably, and like she had, um, Aaron out scouting for other people to bring in. Um, it just seems really weird how they wouldn't have found the, uh, the quarry, the quarry by then. And think, I mean, just all of it just stinks. And like, I, I think what the, well, in the comic books, it's actually male, male, male figure that Rick finds in charge of Alexandria, who was a politician. And I think we're led to believe that Deanna was a politician and her husband, Reg was like an architect or something. And he was obviously very, very tall or an engineer, very intelligent. And then of course we have old drunk Pete, who was the doctor of Alexandria and he was an asshole and, you know, worthless, uh, and leading on, on up to Deanna, who after Pete died, he, she was the next one on deck and she, she bites it. It's just like this show mercilessly, cruelly takes out any characters who exhibit what makes our species strong. Well, including the fact that, um, let me see, they, they always give them they're either weak or, you know, naive or, or secretly an asshole. And it was intelligent. All right. What, which brings up the whole thing with Eugene. Okay. He's like the one guy still standing who's, you know, seemingly intelligent, although we don't exactly know what he did in his life pre apocalypse doing. Con man. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I mean, he, I don't even think he's got those goods. Um, anyway, but he, all we have from. Maybe he was a porn producer. That's why he likes to watch. <laughs> uh, I, I hope not. But anyway, but they, they set him up to be a liar and a coward. And he only just in the last few episodes of season six was exhibiting anything close to, to Kutzpa. And I, I'm even pissed off about the part where he takes Abraham to that factory like oh we can make we can make bullets. I'm like oh finally fucking Eugene, mm-hmm. you're gonna yep. be worth something. And then when the zombie comes on with a little like med- metal helmet or whatever melted on his head, <laughs> which by the way I don't really buy into because you know if you heat the brain it's going to destroy the brain. But well, you yes. know whatever. Um, Eugene, being the smart, intelligent human being that he is, just like bonks him on top of the head that's made of metal and almost gets eaten until Abraham helps him again. So like. It's just this rampant, pervasive anti-intellectualism like, oh, smart people have to be coddled uh, and we don't really care what happens to them necessarily. It's only like Abraham's sort of like brotherly affection for Eugene that has carried him so far. And it's just uh, it's bullshit, man. I'm, I'm done with it. And it sort of really come into focus. And for the, like I said, the, for the longest time, I couldn't put my finger on what like what was really bothering me about the show. And I know we've mentioned it in the past you know, the past year with Kiki Tauntaun podcast, um, it, it, it's just becoming more and more obvious, especially with this fear of the walking dead thing. And I think I pointed out last summer that it's like, you might as well just call it f- uh fear, stupid people doing stupid things. Yet uh, somehow miraculously survive. Oh God, that premiere. Because, this, oh, stupid. Oh my God, Jeff. I know. And I like, okay. You know, I wrote this big thing about, you know, being done with the show, but I, I wanted to watch the premiere of Fear the Walking Dead. Not, and, and like, I'm, the attraction for me isn't there right now. Uh, I wanted to watch it to be able to talk about this, well, you know, what we're podcasting about and just to kind of see, like, you know, are they going to change? Cause that, the one character I actually like a lot is Strand. And of course, he's a heartless asshole because he's smart. I like, cause he's I, smart. I, I want, 
Yeah, yeah, and that's kind of where they're going. But like the dude, the dude's savvy. I mean, yeah. give him that. But even on that show, people are acting counterintuitively. They're not thinking divergently. You have. I think I like the part where Cliff was kind of like, all right, fuck those other people, because I think that's what people really, really would do, because it's all about survival of the tribe. That's how that's how we have evolved, is we have evolved for the tribe, and his tribe would be endangered if they rescued anybody off that boat, and he's like, all right, fuck those people. I'm going to protect my own kid and my own you know, spouse or whatever and her children. That was more important. It would be a hard um, decision, but... You'd be surprised yeah. how many people would make that same exact it, no, decision. No, that's the thing. No, they would make the same decision. And that's kind of – I'm going to get to that point here in a minute with the, the finale. But uh, on Fear the Walking Dead, it's like you, you have these little bits where they're acting the way they're supposed to act according to our you know, evolutionary programming. And then they just keep doing this these remarkably stupid things. Well, um, we're going back to not helping them. It's all we're all about peace, love, understanding, and sharing. As long as there's enough shit to go around. <laughs> uh, well, as soon as that doesn't yeah. happen, ooh, things get ugly quick. Yeah, things things get ugly, but also people try to think you know to think their way around the problem. Like what's going on? Like when Eugene offered the idea of sorghum as a a, a crop. Yeah. I'm like, oh, that's actually that's actually kind of far. And of course, far. they were and, and they were <laughs> dumb, kind of smart, and they were so dumb to. To risk their truck chasing after this one person and having it go yeah. in the fucking water and ruining it. Um, yeah, talk well, about that's the thing. If they're if dumb. they're can if they're canned goods, they're not ruined. No, the sorghum. I mean, come on, the now. sorghum will be. Well, if there was actually sorghum in there, I, I from the look of what that was in that truck was just all sorts of shit. Uh. But who knows? Um. Anyway, so. Bringing it back around here, like Fear the Walking Dead is even worse in that regard than the, than the flagship title of The Walking Dead. And like I'm telling you, man, you read the source material, the Kirkman stuff, and it's very much it's 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 almost subversive and conspiratorial in how they are portraying these characters. And if it's not like that, then these are the, the these are the worst, laziest writers. On TV right now. Well, and you were talking about the whole little, uh, you know, uh, CB conversation with the other boat. Oh, with Fear of the Walking Dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you get, you gather information. You don't give information. Divulge. Yes. And uh, yeah, she obviously put everybody in harm's way, and you saw the results of that for some other group. Yeah, that dude was just looking to fuck some people up and steal their stuff. And the and let's uh, just go she, swimming. She's like, oh, yeah, all all that, all of that. Uh, uh, so anyway, um, <clears throat> let's talk a little bit about this back half of the season then. Um, so I think the first we, – we've already established the first half was like, all right, I, you know, like it was pretty good. I like the sequential, serialized nature of it. And then we got into the back half with you know Glenn crawling out from underneath the dumpster and then uh, Alexandria – finding you know, Alexandria overrun. And uh, from a storytelling standpoint – it's so lazy how they deal with that problem. Anyway, um, oh my god, I'm just, I'm so just flabbergasted with the show. And and the funny thing is, Jeff, um, I think I've said it, you know, the head of the, the beginning of our little talk here. But man, I'm actually reading a lot of vitriol from critics and from people directed towards the show. And like I said, some of it is directed towards the cliffhanger na nature of the episode, but it's actually you know, like more the same kind of beefs that we're, we're talking about right here. It's just really poor storytelling. It's counter, it's counterintuitive. It's against what's going on with the characters. And, you know, that's the thing. Like, we love these characters, uh, but, and I, I think I credit that more to the acting than the writing. Oh, yeah. And I still care about the characters. But this, it's so fucking terrible. The, 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 how they're having these plot devices progress. The same mistakes. So when Alexandria's walls fall, they're okay, like, okay, they're trapped in a house. They get out. Little Sammy gets eaten. Okay, whatever. Carl gets shot. Well, he, okay. They, you go they, with, they, oh, you go with him. We're, you know, you go, you go hide with that guy instead of coming with us because it's going to be dangerous. Like, no, yeah. I'm coming yeah. with you. You'd be like, hey, listen, you little shit. You go with him now. You, you can go in the, you got you guys can go hang out in the attic because like there are no zombies getting in the attic for the foreseeable future. You get the people who you need out under the you know the zombie ponchos, yeah. and 
you like you set up like a what a you know murder tunnel. There are all yeah. sorts of ways or around you, this. You can also set up to, you know, like a like a tunnel with murder holes, like they best you used to in the Middle Ages. Yeah, or medieval you, times. Or you can just create like a almost like a modern day uh, you know fence, like uh, like a tunnel fence tunnel and like a slaughterhouse. Or or even before the wall comes down, why did they not cut slats? Uh, you know, average height, average eye level into the wall and just start stabbing people. And eventually you have enough bodies around the wall where the other zombies aren't going to be able to get through because there are too many bodies in the way. Well, I've been saying this. So that you're yeah. adding another, another layer, layer of protection. Well, I've been saying this since the, you know, the prison thing. It's, you don't let your enemies gather on mass. You, it should be, they take shifts and it's these people's jobs to just kill zombies all day long. Kill zombies and, all day. And, and you can, you can, and when there's, and when you, when you're done, you can even like ring a little bell and call in a few more because you don't want them out. In, you right. don't want them to run in to them out in the woods either. Well, and, and here's the other thing. I mean, remember how in that one episode, Aaron showed Maggie the, the tunnel out through the sewer. Yeah. Like why weren't people like running towards that? Because the problem was, hold on, Jeff. I heard a child crying. Uh-oh. After these messages, we'll be right back. And here's a random funny piece of audio I like to refer to as a palate cleanser. She now faces drug possession charges and charges for trying to smuggle a gun into jail. <laughs> Come on. Who doesn't have that? The old caboose pistol. Everybody has one. What do you get all worked up over? Hey, don't knock it till you've tried it. Did you just did you just say caboose? I know some women who could hide a machine gun in there. Yeah. Ew, seriously? That is so gross. And now back to our irregular program. Well, like with the tunnel, like with everything else, unless they have, you know, a, it, you know, at least several hours to a day to plan, they, they never seem to do anything smart. No. No. Uh, okay. The quarry thing, is, I think, is what you're referring to. Like, oh, that's a plan. They're trying to execute it. It goes south. I see what you're saying there. Um, and that, that's the first time where they're actually trying to think around a problem instead of just reacting to it, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Um, okay. I, I, I got you. But it, from the, you know, they had got, they put all the cars along the roadside to sort of herd them in the correct direction. They're at that wall with the RV to sort of buttress them around the curve. Um, obviously, a lot of planning and forethought went into that and time and effort, but God damn it, they're just, they're, there's nothing else in conjunction with that. Um, and, you know, the, obviously the, the, the precedent is set that the characters are able to think Yet, for the rest of the whole goddamn season, they don't. They do not think. Yeah, it's it's starting to get a little a little old, but I don't think I'm done with it yet. I wanna see what Duh, okay. I wanna see what happens. Well, okay, so like I said, they they could have could have gone down that sewer. There would have been no zombies on the other side because they're all in Alexandria now. They yeah. could have gotten out. They could have walled the Alexandria back in somehow with vehicles or whatever, and then have like like I said, like a little murder tunnel where you can just you know lead them out a little bit of time and just start killing the killing the ones inside by luring mm -hmm. them back out. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, no, it, it's not how it happens. And then of course, sort of the icing on the cake or the. Uh, Kick square, square in the old nutsack where those lazy, lazy plot devices, Deus Ex Machina, uh, about one, Abraham finding the RPG launcher uh, with some, you know, some RPGs just kind of laying around. Yeah. Uh, bear in mind, we, we know that the Saviors, um, you know, been around and probably would have found them and taken those by now. But whatever, whatever, whatever. Oh, uh, and then speaking of Abraham, I mean, the guy, the guy's getting a little greedy. I mean, first he leaves, who's probably the best look looking woman uh, left alive after the apocalypse and goes after like the second or third best looking, you know, I, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. next, I she... next he's going to, next he want next he's going to have to try to get a shot at Maggie or something. He's just, he's just Ooh. greedy. He's just greedy. And after that finale, he might get it. You might get a shot. Just that's saying. True. That's true. That's mm -hmm. true. He's just, he just wants uh, all the hot ladies at least once. 
Uh, yeah, you know what? I can't say I blame him for that. But anyway, <laughs> uh, so, you know, the other uh, Deus Ex Machina that was just so lazy, just so backhandedly offensive was Daryl coming across that petroleum trunk, truck. And I was like, oh, shit, that's how he's going to save Alexandria. And then, you know, the mid-season finale with Glenn, quote-unquote, dying, uh, there was, like, that little after thing they showed um, during Talking Dead. It was supposed to be, like, a preview of the, the pickup. And the next you know, the next half or whatever, it showed how Abraham and a company are, you know, uh, waylaid on the road by the Saviors. And that's the first glimpse of the Saviors that they got. And like, yes, they're going to lose the petroleum truck. They're going to have to figure some some other way out of Alexandria. And of course, Daryl shoots the RPG and blows everybody up. You're like, fuck, he's <laughs> still going to use a petroleum truck. Um, and of course, with the time they get there, and it's like, I, okay, I'm sort of torn with that that episode where you know they're coming out. Uh, and there's zombie ponchos, and Sam gets eaten, and then Carl gets <sighs> shot. And um, okay, like the, he 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 gets sort of. He he goes out on his sort of he wants to make a last stand, which is very ill conceived. And uh, if any other character at any other point in time of the show, that character would have been like waylaid immediately by the zombie horde. But no, yeah. no, it's Rick. So like those those zombies are going to kind of back back off a little bit because Rick's a a nasty little fucker. <laughs> and um, anyway, so the. Oh, I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> God, God train crash. Uh, train of thought. Oh, oh, the ill conceit. You know, the last stand, and you're like, oh, everybody's gonna make it. Everybody's gonna be, you know, they're they're kicking ass. And you're like, oh wait, there's a lot of zombies there. Never mind. And then like, just at that nick of time, when Glenn's about ready to get die for the second time this season, uh, you have Daryl and Abraham and. Um, Sasha show up and um, save him and then everybody else. And then, okay, I'm, I'm going to throw this out there and see what you think about this as well. Mm-hmm. But they, you know, they lead the zombie horde into the, the little pond there by putting the, you know, have a little trail in the pond soaking with metro- petroleum and lighting on fire. And at that point you see a bunch of the zombies like, oh, look, fire. Let's go to the fire. And then they all die. And, you know, Rick and company can just sort of mop up duty. Whereas in this last week with the uh, premiere of Fear the Walking Dead, uh, Los Angeles was bombed and the zombies are not walking into the fire. They're going into yeah, the I ocean. Did, I did notice that. They're, they're, now they're, they're, it's like maybe they get dumber as they go along. I don't know. But that, they're like, oh, good. Fire, run. That instinct still kicks in until later. Um, until later. And then, or maybe it's just East Coast, West Coast thing. I don't think so. I mean, it's not Snoop Dogg or Tupac and Biggie or anything. Um, I don't think we're we're talking smart zombies versus remarkably dumb zombies. Well, it's just changing changing the rules, which you know shows yeah. they've been guilty of uh, a lot. Right, right. <laughs> so anyway, so you had those lazy, lazy ass uh, fucking plot devices and I'm, I'm telling you man it's just this pervasive anti-intellectualism and that goes you know that brings us to the finale with just some of the poorest laziest insulting character choices writing choices and it starts with rick bringing every able-bodied human being in an rv a gas guzzling not well armored rv to take maggie to the hilltop to see the only apparently doctor left in existence the OBGYN over at hilltop which um, instead i mean he could have just sent for the doctor yeah of course this is this is just which, after he murdered some 30 to 50 saviors in their sleep sending uh, for the, the doctor or two before that sending the sending say for what? the doc sending for the doctor would have, would have made much more sense because um, Alexandria still has running clean water, it, it yeah. cold. They they seem to have air conditioning, electricity. I yeah. mean, if, if you're going to perform an operation or something like that, you you want that's those are the conditions you want. You want to be able to sterilize and keep the person cool right. or warm, whatever they need. And plus, they just got back with a shit ton of medication, which I doubt they yeah. brought, which I doubt they brought with them. Right, 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 <laughs> and so. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, I mean, you also have like, 
books, and I, I'm almost led to believe that people in Alexander, you know, the people in the zombie apocalypse are no longer able to read; they're functionally illiterate or something. But even when my wife was pregnant, she had a book. I'm just like, oh, you know, you could have a contraction at this point; it doesn't mean anything. Or if this happens, go see a doctor. Like it had very informative information. Surely, what to expect? What to expect? The beginning you're of expecting? yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, the beginning of season six, and and then like you think Glenn, Glenn, the master of uh, scavenging, would have found a book, yes, and looked at it, but no, they're just gonna wait so for the sets... movie. They're just gonna wait for the movie uh, to come out. They, oh, they, yeah, they don't yeah. read. <laughs> yeah, well, then the movie for what to expect when you're expecting is out. Um, anyway, oh, okay. the, the they they don't seem particularly well armed. And they're in this RV that, you know, guzzles gas in a very, uh, you know, in a post-apocalyptic society that is no longer able to distill petroleum. Um, and, you know, like, I've, I've driven large trucks before, for like moving trucks and whatnot. Those things are not maneuverable at all. No. So you're going to set out in this, you know, truck that's a bit of a target and can't move and isn't well armored with all of your best people. And the first thing, you know, at the first little meetup where they meet the the group of saviors on the road and they're like about to execute this leader of some other group. I'm like, okay, that's happenstance, right? Like, oh, they just ran into them yeah. and they go they you know, back, they back away. And at that point in, in the story, I was like, okay, okay. Um, and then you have uh, the next stop and you have more of the same at that point. And for number one, like Rick should have realized after what he had been doing the few nights before that, that he had to fear reprisal. He had to yeah, have. Yeah. As a leader, well, as because a he was thinking a... human being, he had to fear an ambush, reprisal, something. Which, well, you know, they were trying he, to do. Because he wasn't smart enough to find out about the enemy. He, he right. did this all right. half-cocked, you know, know your enemy, know yourself, a thousand victories will be yours, stuff like that. Right. It's... Uh, it, it's and okay, so he, he goes from the second little uh, ambush, backs out of that. He finds the chain gang. He finds the tower of burning logs. At that, uh, of course, at the, least by the burning by the gigantic thing of logs, you go, okay, this is fucked. We should go home. Yeah, they should yeah, have done and, it. And, okay. Should have done it earlier. But at least when they get to the logs, yes. it's like okay, they have like Abraham said, well, they got a lot of people. They're cinching a trap. Yeah, they got a lot they're of people. In a trap. Equipment. They should have gone home. They should have gone home or. And this is why, I, like, this would, would you know what would have made compelling story storytelling. And if just like if you make your character smart, have Rick with like a, this like backup plan where he sort of like made this little spot for a rainy day back in the town, you know, close to Alexandria or whatever, where they could like make a last stand. Like you know, have like little traps, kill a bunch of saviors, and when you know the the end of it, Rick could still get captured in the you know. So whoever survives or whatever still gets captured, but no, it's just like, I'm going to be a Southern dumbass and just keep doing the same thing. And honestly, and this is, you know, as a father, and as much as I, I would love Maggie as a character and as a, you know, she's, she's been with him since uh, almost the beginning, I guess. Yeah. Season two. Um, you put the safety of your own kid above Maggie. Sorry, you do. You just do. And, he would not have endangered Carl to any greater extent. He would have been trying to steer Carl away from danger. Well, well Carl was just not going to take. Carl was just not going to take no for an answer. I mean, it's like uh, you got like several people that are bigger than him. You just like, push his ass away well, and leave. I don't even care about the Carl thing. I think the uh, you know somebody like Abraham who should have been like in the comics. He's dead already because um, like that Deanna death was actually. Abraham's death in the comics, oh, okay. but like leave leave Abraham back at the walls to defend, you know, because like and this is the other thing we were saying, like Rick being a cop, he has tactical training. Abraham being a career military man has tactical training, yet no one's employing any kind of tactics. No, no, Not really. Uh, okay, so yeah, you, you got that, and of course they they cinch their little trap and. They're done, and I'm 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 done, dude. I'm I'm done. And here's, it's just lazy story writing. Uh, the characters are operate; they're no longer operating on anything that I would deem worthy. I mean, 
it, what would have redeemed it for me is, okay, I think I said this before, Carol was pretty much my, like, she has sort of weaseled her way into being my favorite character. She was the first one who exhibited the, uh, you know, the killer be killed mentality, the yeah. survival instinct yeah. back at the prison when she was oh, off yeah, yeah, the people yeah. with the, with the flu yeah. and Rick exiled her for it because she killed them before they had actually died, which, you know, sorry, when people die in their sleep is the potential is there for them to come back awake and start gnawing on people an hour later. What Carol did was perfectly acceptable. It's not, it's, it's not even monstrous at that point. Well, however, the people they were, were going are prison, that far down now. They were in a prison. They could have just locked the doors. They could have just shut them up. True. People. But still, <laughs> then you're, then you're dealing with the, the contaminated corpses and whatever else. Yeah. Um, so, you know, of course she's the one who saves all of their asses. I mean, Terminus. she's the deus ex machina at Terminus. Yeah. Um, it's not Rick saying, they don't know who they're screwing with. I mean, like, no motherfucker. They don't know they're screwing with Carol because she's the one who saves your asses. Well. I mean, really, when it comes down to it. And with the wolves, her dressing up like, uh, yeah. sh- like what was that guy's so name? So badass. And, okay, then you have the thing where she's like, fuck, you know, just kind of messing with little Sammy. And, oh, you are know, like, oh, Carol's I'll, take, cookies. I'll take care of you. Carol's yeah, cookies. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> And you're like, oh, that's so badass. Uh-huh. But uh, you know, you get you get around to Sammy's death, uh, then you, you like she kind of lost a little bit of herself in that respect. But like, I I I don't mind that character turn because I think a real person would do that because you isolate yourself from the reality. But it's it can't be indefinite. So when there's somebody that you know, she had children. She had Sophia who died, mm-hmm. and then Sammy was kind of like a surrogate for her in that respect. And he gets chomped as well. And like, yeah, it's going to have an effect on her. And so she strikes out on her own to kind of, I don't want to say she was suicidal, but she was kind of, uh, uh she was fatalistic. If it about happens, her own it existence happens. at that point. Yeah. Right. And well, one thing that she, she had, she had stared down the, the barrel. Like she, you know, the, the Nietzsche quote about staring into the abyss, uh, beware that the, the abyss, the abyss back, doesn't yeah. stare back at you. Like she had stared it down. She didn't like what she saw, and therefore she was heading on her own way. When now, you talk what about made this muchacha, when you talk about tactical, she displays the most tactical mind out of almost any of them. Per- yes, you know, Rick, agreed. Rick, when he, if, if Rick would have been the one captured by those people that Carol was captured in, you know, the the yeah. the, the, the the redhead and the you know she pre- right. she, she pretended to be weak. When when right. when she you know when she's stronger than that that's one of the Dude, tenets of war. She sewed she sewed up like a an AK forty seven in her fucking car heart. Yeah, I know that was pretty cool. <laughs> which which is remarkable forethought. You know what I mean? You, yeah. you know because of the hastiness with which she left, she didn't just do that. Yeah, you saw her finishing sewing sewing something in you know her coat and. You thought it was just uh, like a patch job. You thought maybe it's just a hole or something else. <laughs> yeah, like, that's true. That's true. It's like holy shit, that's badass. But also the, yeah. the 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 pretending to be to be weak when they were captured and and getting ingratiating her, them with them right. to a degree right. and and getting oh I just need this to pray with as she's sharpening it <laughs> when they're not looking. She shows a tactical mind, right? Which which um, shows that she's smarter than most of them, which is could she, also yeah, be yeah. a reason why she's so she's so troubled by things because you know right. smart people. Right. I, I agree. In, in, in many respects, she should be the one leading the Alexandria rather yeah. than Rick. But, yeah. you know, that's that's not what Kirkman's going to allow. They've made her, they, you know, her growth uh, as a character far exceeds anything remotely close to what she was in the comic book. Because after Sophia, actually, Sophia's still alive in the comic books, but it's just like in the comic, in the comic, she's never able to really deal with the new reality. She goes crazy and she dies. And oh. th- that obviously th- we're talking about completely distinct, different characters, Carol comic, Carol show. And, um, it really pisses me off that they didn't do more with it. And that, that that's going to lead me to my, I guess my con- conclusion is what would have made this episode redeemable if they had like, Okay, first of all, if they had make Rick smarter and tried to like get out of the trap, but still just couldn't quite get out, like that would have been respectable. Well, before before we go any it... further, I do have something to say that another one of those weak plot plot points. Um, yeah, go um, about the saviors. Unless their range is huge, there are more wolves than deer, metaphorically speaking, and that right, just right. doesn't work. There are too many bad guys not farming and not yeah. enough farmers, as far as I can tell. 
Yeah. yeah, there there would have been a way out. I mean, any, any way you look at it, unless you're looking at a savior army of like million, then and if you, you're going to get out, if the saviors were running around getting tribute for depopulating the area of zombies, uh, people might be like, "Well, okay, you've earned half my stuff then." But there are still zombies everywhere. What the fuck are they doing? I mean, yeah, they're do they really want a job? I mean, do even do even the saviors want to live in a world where they might get eaten if they go take a piss? Yeah. It's just yeah, man. It, it ain't. It's it's lazy. It's it, as far lazy. as I can tell, there's way too many saviors to be to be, uh, you know, right. Realistic. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Uh, so I, I bring him back down to the Carol thing. I, I think for me, what I was hoping for was I, I really thought that they were leading. Like, okay, Carol left the group. She's going to go out. She's going to get caught. And this is what I was hoping was going to go down because they had already toyed with the idea of killing Glenn earlier in the season. They actually toyed with the idea twice. Yeah, we're counting the uh, the wall thing. Um, you know, of course, we know that Glenn's the one who dies in the comic. But if Carol had been the one caught. And once, you know, Rick and company had been brought in and, you know, forced to kneel in that little group that Negan brought, had him kneel into, like, what if Negan, or what if Carol just stood up and be like, Rick, you're going to learn to forgive again. And then, like, walked over to Negan and be like, listen, motherfucker, you're, you're going to kill me. And then, you know, sh- she's setting herself up as the, the archetype. You know, she's sacrificing her herself. Uh, in essence, she's becoming the Christ figure for the rest of the group and, and for Rick's own redemption. Like, how powerful would that have been from a storytelling standpoint for the viewer? Um, Yeah, I, I still I still wouldn't want to see her go because she's, you know, she is one I of my no, favorite I characters. Wouldn't, but, it, but as far as, like, who dies at the end, we know, and, like, there is no one who would pack the emotional punch like one of the originals. And Carol's one of the originals. Yeah. She's in episode, you know, episode one, briefly. Um, and of course, in episode two and onward. But, I mean, you know, it's either going to be Glenn, it's going to be Carol. And I guess Carol isn't in, in episode one. But anyway, Glenn, Carol, um, that's it. And Carl, of course. Yeah. And Rick, and I guess you could co- sort of say that Morgan, because he, he was there on, on the first yeah, episode. Yeah, yes, he was. Morgan's yeah, son we, we almost killed Rick, because Mo- Most walker. people don't like Morgan, so fuck. Like, that's not going to have the same punch. Really? Like, I like Morgan. Morgan. Uh, I, I, I don't like Morgan. I, I love the actor, Lenny James, but I don't like yeah. his character. I, because he's, he's, he's trying to be too zen about things, and although he kicks ass. I think he's going to find the dude, middle you, path. Got it kill i'm sorry it's just you know you you got it we just shot that guy to kill carol i think he's gonna find that that middle path where you don't have to kill everyone you come across and you don't have to leave everyone you come across alive there is a middle path which is one of the true which is one of the true tenets of zen you know in buddhism is the the middle path anyway so like yeah (laughs) like you'd asked me earlier like am i done jeff I'm attached to those characters. I want to see what happens to Carol and I want to see what happens to Rick and Maggie. And, and, and I'm fairly certain because of, you know, the various analysis that has been done over the last week or so that it was in fact, Glenn that died at the end, really? uh, which further enrages me. I don't, th- because I'm it, not, I've been trying to figure it out and I'm not no, so no, damn they, sure. It's, it's, it's pretty much a done deal. Uh, there's screen caps and there's audio and it, it makes it pretty, it makes it pretty clear. If you oh. haven't checked it out, I would it, I would recommend YouTubing some of that. It just I was anyway. I was actually trying to figure that out by by the reaction by the uh, oh. it's it's not it's well, not I'll, Carl it's not Carl because no Rick yeah, would have reacted. It's, it's like we're playing a it's like we're playing a logic game. It's it's not Carl because Rick would have reacted. It's not Rick because right. Carl would have reacted. Um, part of part of the the audio that's isolated is you can hear you can hear a Maggie and you can hear what is definitively Lauren Cohen. Uh, screaming the loudest. Wait, who so who was it's, screaming it's the loudest? I didn't hear anybody scream. Maggie, yeah, it's it's isolated audio. You, oh, you ha- I mean, you have to be- go back and like listen to it. See, I was like, wait, I was like listening to see if Maggie screamed. Um, yeah, she does. Ah, and you know, like I could see the just because Gimble's a, a dipshit, I can see him like just pulling a fast one and be like, ah, check the it's really Abraham. But like, that's no, what I mean, I've... it's got, it's gotta be, it's gotta be an original. I was figuring it might be Abraham. Cause you know, Oh, he's a strong one. I think, I think they're, they're going to do something else with him and he might be dying soon, but well, it's, it's it, just another reason I was curious if, um, that it might not be Glenn is because Glenn was kind of facing 
towards everyone else just a little bit. And yeah. you didn't see any of the people kneeling behind Negan. And you could see some people behind Negan uh, as he's doing the deed. Um, yes, yeah, so well, I'm trying I, to do this rec- logically, which the whole sh- show maybe is based on yeah. logic. So yeah, yeah, yeah. probably yeah. wasting I, oh, probably a futile that. exercise. <laughs> anyway, so like I, I, I want to see what happens to characters, but like I have no. Come October when it you know they start talking about the premiere, I'm just like, I, I feel that I'm going to have the same reaction about it that I had about Fear the Walking Dead, where like I don't, I'm not invested in those characters. I'm tired of everybody in that show being a fucking dumbass, uh, except yeah. for Strand, and apparently he's just a weirdo. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm like I don't know I, I might cross that bridge when I come to it I, I don't feel like I have to be a principled man like oh I told you that Walking Dead sucks I refuse to watch it like I'm not going to say that but I will say that it's like it's no longer like one of those A-level shows like Game of Thrones is or even like Daredevil is for me now uh, Game uh, Walking Dead is just it's just sort of mindless now you're going to you're going to hate watch the, it you're going to hate watch it like you do when you start a book <laughs> and then you hate finish it You've told me you do that before. Uh, it's like I started. I have yeah. to finish it. <laughs> like like Stephen King's it. Oh, don't get me started. <laughs> I have a question. Wait, one, one, once you're seven hundred pages in, you have to hate finish that last eight hundred pages. <laughs> Holy shit! That's how long. Yeah, um, it's like, it's like thirteen hundred pages. Um, I, like I do have a question for uh, for you. Okay, the the people who who found Morgan and Carol at the end, and you know, we need help. And he's like, well, let's get you some. Um, the hilltop, yeah. Was that the hilltop people? Yeah, because they had horses. You know, only the hilltop has horses. Oh, okay. I was going to ask you because I didn't. I didn't recognize those people. And and they had the the hilltop spears. And did you notice they were wearing armor? Yes, yes, they wow. were. Yes, they were. And they were and carrying the thing. weapons that don't run out of ammunition. And and they're riding hor- horses that don't need gasoline. Yes. Um, yeah. So, so, I mean, Kirkman, that's in the comic book. Uh, although, like, it's so limited. Like, you know, you and I both read the Jonathan Mayberry Rotten Ruin series. Like, the idea of just taking old carpet and, like, wrapping it around you with some duct tape. There ain't no zombies getting through that shit. Well, yeah. That's like I, um, in, the, in the book I'm writing, I use a Carhartt and three layers of jeans. Yeah. That's just, that's, <laughs> you're, you're not, oh. Fuck it, man. I'm done. Like I said, I, I no longer expect the best. I, 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 I'm, I'm fed up with trying to expect quality storytelling from the show. As long as Kirk, because honestly, I think Kirkman's a bit of a despot. Uh, they've given him too much power, and I think mm. that's why Frank Darabont was fired after season one. If I like from one, some of the stuff that I've read, uh, because Darabont wanted to diverge more from the comic and make it much more reality based. Uh, and then, of course, they brought in Gimple, who wants to keep almost everything exactly, almost down to the shots in the frames, like the comics. Mm. Um, that that tells me that that Kirkman's exercising, uh, you know, this despotic authority over the production, um, and Gimple might be very well be his lackey. And I think until they, if they were to lessen Kirkman's influence and ditch Gimple. Uh, it's it's trash. It's not going to be a good show anymore. And next week we're going to talk about Fear of the Walking Dead. But I think we've said all we need to say about that, don't you? Yeah, I like. I don't think it's honestly. I don't think Fear of the Walking Dead is substantive enough to actually have much discourse over. Like I said, just the um the uh, oh yeah, I'm going to tell you exactly where I am. You know, even though I don't know who you are, instead of making you tell me exactly where you are, trying to figure it out through information you give me. But you know she's yeah. she's young, dumbass. She's young, you know. Maybe that can be expected. He he used the whole "my girlfriend died" ploy, you know. That was pretty smooth of him. And uh, also the, I just thought I'd go for a swim. <laughs> <laughs> I was just waiting that for was almost as that was almost as good as your Diane Feinstein impersonation. I was just waiting for like a great white to just come up and do one of those breaching attacks. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, you know, honestly, when he got in the water, I thought they. they I, don't, I don't know if you ever seen the uh, the Fulci uh, Italian gore gore flick zombie uh-uh. uh, where it, a zombie fights a shark. Oh, really? I'm like, oh yeah, it's gonna be like zombie shark, yeah. But no, it was uh, nothing of the sort. Zombie um, fights right, a shark. Man, I think shark we're ready wins. to wrap up the apocalyptic post. That's uh, it. Let's go ahead and move it right along to some other topics. We can maybe end up on a happier. 
more hilarious or, note. It, maybe not happier, but at least funnier. Well, no, I can't funnier, remember what the last funnier. We're, we're def- just, just some smiles or something. If you like any of the shows in the Culture Dig Network, please go to iTunes, rate us, and give us a review. Like us on Facebook.com forward slash Culture Dig. Then check out our Tumblr pages. Tumblr spelled T U M B L R. Go to culturedig.tumblr.com. The kinky tauntaun.tumblr.com. That's the kinky T A U N T A U N dot tumblr dot com and sovcast dot tumblr dot com. That's S O V C A S T dot tumblr dot com. And last but certainly not least, get involved in the show and send us an email to culture dig network at gmail.com. It could be funny or nerdy videos, funny stories about dumb people doing dumb things, funny stories that are not that important, not even close to normal, but definitely not boring, cool science, history, and technology stories, news of the nerd variety, and you can also record some audio or videos of your own with your phone, tablet, or computer and send it in. It could be love mail, hate mail, questions, and if you have a problem and need some advice, send it in and our Sith Lords will help you in a segment we call Sith Advice is Sound Advice. Send in your emails and your journey towards the dark side will be complete. It is unavoidable. It is your destiny.